Hello, this is Saprian from fe4all.com. Uh, today we'll do something really interesting. I'll show you how to do a frequency response analysis uh, of the horn of an ultrasonic welding machine. And I'll show you exactly what frequency response means and how to understand the various outputs from this analysis. And believe me, it, this, the things I will show you in this video today took me months to internalize and understand. So this is really something I wanted to tell you for a long time and I just couldn't find the time to make this video, but this video is extremely valuable. Uh, if you're coming from YouTube directly, uh, be sure to check out my article on the blog, which correspond to, to this uh, simulation, and you will find much more detail about frequency response analysis. Okay, so let's start out. So this is my uh, this is my horn. So this is uh, the part of the ultrasonic welder which hits uh, the part. Um, so in the article, I'm explaining how an ultrasonic welder is actually working, uh, and here in this video, I'll show you how to simulate that. So I already meshed my uh, my part with a 3D tetrahedral mesh. Uh, and now I will assign the boundary condition and the loading. So let's go. Let's go into uh, the constraint and let's uh, let's fix this part. So as you see, there is a hole, and there is a small area where he, where uh, which is supposed to be fixed here. So what I'll do is that I will select the four uh, faces of the hole and I will pin them and then I will select this face which will be uh, which will be constrained in the Z direction and I will select I select these two faces here which will be uh, constrained in Y direction. So that's basically uh, it for the constraints, a very simple uh, boundary scheme. Uh, now let's apply a loading. So this part is supposed to hit uh, my part that I want to weld with a certain frequency. Uh, but you'll see, I will first defi define a static load and I will uh, transform this load into a frequency dependent load afterwards inside the analysis case. So for the moment, let's just define a pressure load on this phase here. So let's use, for example, 0 0.1. Let's take a look. Okay, so a pressure is applied in this direction of 0 0.1. Now the first thing I'll do, um, oh okay, I forgot to tell you about the materials, but uh, I already defined that. So I'm just using alloy steel, and in case you're interested uh, to reproduce this analysis, the here are the properties corresponding to this. Okay, now um, what I'll do is a model analysis first. So the the reason I'm I want to do a model analysis is because I want to understand what are uh, the model frequencies, what are the modes of this part, what will be, um, what will be the, the critical frequencies that will uh, create eventually some resonance if I have a load which excites these parts at the same frequency. So let's create a model analysis. So I have not much to modify in the screen, so I just close that and let's just solve this. So now I'll have to wait a few seconds. You can see here it's building a matrix and solving that. Okay, done. So I got the 10 uh, first mole modes of uh, vibration. 
So let's take a look at the first mode. So each of the modes correspond to a certain frequency. So as you can see, the first mode of vibration is uh, approximately 1000 hertz, hertz. The second one is 1300 hertz. And for each of these modes, you can see that the deformation uh, arise in a certain specific way. So for the modes number uh, three, for example, if let's say I increase a bit deformation and I, uh, I play the animation, you see that uh, it's, it happens when the part deforms in this way. So this is the modes number three. The modes number four will be like that. modes number five, etc. So the thing is that not uh, my pressure, which is here, I don't know yet what kind of modes uh, it will trigger because not all, not all the frequency modes will enter in resonance with my loading because the load has a specific direction um, and a specific frequency as well. So these two parameters a cause that my load may only uh, create resonance with certain specific modes, not ev every one of those modes. So what I want to know now is which of these modes will be critical uh, for my design, so which means which one can eventually trigger a large displacement of on my part, and what will be exactly the value of this displacement. Because the, the people who don't know much about model analysis, maybe they think that the value that you are here, the maximum, the maximum displacement here uh, is the real value, but that's not. Actually, this value is totally arbitrary and doesn't mean anything in model analysis. So you shouldn't look at this value. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. The only thing with the model analysis gives you is uh, the frequencies and the shape how the, the parts actually deform. So right now I'll show you more than that. I'll show you how to, to, to see how this part actually responds to uh, a various range of frequencies. Um, but first, I'd like to know what is the static response of this part. Of course, this is a totally dynamic problem. So this is not, what, uh, this is not the final result that I need. But I'm curious, and I would like to see what will be the, the static deformation of this part. Which means what? Which means, um, let's display all, um, not, not that, let's display all the levels. Okay, which means what? If uh, I apply this pressure as a static pressure, which, mean, which will stay on this part and won't change during all the duration of the analysis, um, then what would be the maximum deformation I will get without any dependency of frequency? I want to know that because it will be useful afterwards, you will see. So let's just do a linear static analysis and let's solve it. So let's wait again a few seconds. Okay, I got the result. So now I can check the maximum trans translation. And okay, now this is real deformation. And I see here that the maximum displacement I would get if uh, I am in a static analysis is uh, 0 0.0002 millimeter, which is uh, acceptable, I believe, very small, uh, which is okay. I can take a look at the stresses, which are very small as well and the safety factor, the, min the minimum safety factor is 2500, which is very high. Uh, I remind you that what is dangerous is the safety factor, which is uh, lower than one. So we have very high safety factor. So in static analysis, there will be no problem at all for this part. Now, let's go into dynamic and see if we have the same kind of behavior or if there are some differences when my 
uh, when my pressure here actually vibrates with a certain frequency. So how to do that? Well, first I have to create another analysis case. So, uh, and this type of analysis is called frequency response. Now I have two types of frequency response, direct frequency response and model frequency response. So it's very similar, but there is a difference between the two. So the, the most, let's say, complete uh, and type of analysis that will give you the most accurate results is the direct frequency response because it computes all the equation of mechanics uh, and it couples all that with uh, frequency. Now, what is model frequency response? Model frequency response is a kind of simplification of the direct frequency response when uh, you are not considering damping, for example. So if you are not considering damping, you can uh, kind of uncouple uh, the equation of mechanics and the frequency and uh, you can use the you can actually compute the the, the results using only uh, the modes from the model analysis so it's a, it's a just an algorithm so you don't really need to know all that what you need to know is that most uh, complete is direct and if you you don't have any damping uh, you can use model frequency, it will be faster, but there are some assumptions here uh, as well that you should know. So in my case, let's use the model response frequency. So I'll call that MFR. And you see that uh, in the sets, I have the, my constraints, but I have no load. And the reason is that the pressure that I define on my part uh, is a static pressure, so it's static load, it's not a frequency dependent load. So what I have to do first is to create a frequency uh, dependent load and I can do that in the subcase control. So let's go in the subcase control and here you have something called additional load. So go in here uh, and here let's choose magnitude phase for example um, I have a load set, so the, this load set is actually the static pressure that I defined. Uh, I didn't give it a name, so it's called lo load set 1. Uh, and let's give it a constant magnitude and a phase which is equal to 0. So uh, this is a frequency dependent load, so it has a magnitude and it has a phase. So in this case, I'll just say the phase is 0, so it will be uh, in phase and the magnitude will be uh, equal to, the, the, to the, the, the constant of the static load and then the, this, this load will be a uh, dynamic load. So now that I add it here I have my uh, frequency dependent load and now there's uh, another very important step is to actually tell uh, the, tell the solver what kind of frequency range do you want to solve this problem. Uh, that's very critical because uh, you can imagine the range of frequency possible is very huge, you know, you can go from 1000 Hertz to, uh, to 10,000, 20,000 or much, much more. So, uh, and the, the solver can only compute a certain finite uh, number of frequencies otherwise it would take infinite time so what you have to tell him is how do you want actually to sample the frequency um, the frequency range so it will take frequency at a certain uh, at certain steps and it will only calculate a certain number of frequency so let's consider a linear type of linear type of frequency uh, sampling. So let's say I will use 1000 for the first frequency um, and let's use a frequency increment of 100 and let's compute that for um, let's say for 30 increments. 
basically, or maybe more, let's say 100, I can always stop it when I want. So, which means that the first frequency computed will be 1000, and then it will compute again for 1100, 1200, 1300, until, uh, until, and it will do that for 100 increments. So, add this method. Okay. And let's me check here uh, if we are all set up. Okay. Okay, so now everything's fine. So I just click here and I created my analysis. And now I'm ready to launch that. And I'll show you what happened when, uh, when the analysis starts. Okay, so before doing everything, it's uh, computing again a model analysis. Then it will extract the modes to calculate the results. That's why it's called model frequency response. Should it be long? So Please bear with me a few seconds more. So now you see it started to solve for uh, the first frequency, 1000. So uh, what it means basically is that it started with uh, pressure on the horn, which has a frequency of 1000 Hz, and then it computes and it see what is the maximum displacement for this frequency. Um, and it draw a graph like this one, which tells you actually um, which draws the maximum displacement in function of the frequency. And what is interesting to see, as you see, is that this graph is not constant as you may think. The frequency has an impact on the maximum displacement. So in a static analysis, uh, the maximum displacement was like 2.4, uh, like that, if I remember well. So it was around this level. But you see that when I make, when I, uh, when the load, the pressure is dependent on the frequency, and I increase this frequency, the maximum displacement actually increases as well. So let's wait a bit and see what happens after a few uh, increments. So you see that it started to grow and grow even more exponentially. So when I'm getting closer to a certain frequency, I'm getting more and more displacement around a certain frequency. And this is what is important because it uh, tells me that I'm getting closer, closer to the resonance frequency. Well, and now I have a peak like that. And you see, when at 2600 Hz, it goes down again to a displacement which is, uh, which go again to normal and close to the static uh, displacement. So when I'm get, getting a frequency which is very close to uh, 2000, 2400, I think, uh, I have a peak here and I have the uh, displacement, maximum displacement, which is like four times higher, uh, even even more than four times. Uh, sorry about that. It's uh, it's let me calculate eighty. Uh, it's like forty times higher, if I'm not doing a mistake. Uh, so I have a peak basically here, and now you understand why 
uh, it's extremely important to understand what are uh, what are these speci special frequencies uh, of my model that will cause this kind of resonance because this is a resonance uh, phenomenon. So I know that my uh, my pressure excited at 2,400 hertz will create a small resonance here with a specific maximum displacement. And the good thing about this is that we know this uh, this value. We are sure that this is uh, uh, this is the exact maximum displacement for this frequency. And you will see that I will get other peaks which are even higher than this one uh, right after. It's already starting to grow again. So you see, this one is even higher. And the it's all also important to to mention the importance of the sampling because now I did a linear sampling so uh, here I have not much information of what happened between these two points so if I wanted to be more accurate uh, and get the exact frequency at which this peak happened and what is the, the exact maximum displacement I would have to to make a second analysis maybe with frequency around this range and with much more points in this area so I get a much better uh, result. Okay, now let's wait a bit uh, that this analysis is complete and then I will uh, show you the results. Okay, the analysis is now complete. So uh, you see that I only perform the analysis for a certain range of frequency and there is something very important to, to note in this is that we have three uh, peak inside. So three peak corresponds to what? It corresponds to three uh, model frequency, uh, three modes of these parts that will uh, resonate with my load when it is excited at uh, those specific frequencies. So now what I would like to know is which of those modes uh, is it and what is actually the maximum displacement. So for the maximum displacement it's very easy I just can uh, I could just can uh, see it with the mouse here. So you see that it's really really uh, huge for the third pick. I have uh, to 0 .0 0 0.02 millimeter so which is uh, huge in comparison to uh, what I had for the other modes. Uh, now let's take a look here so what do you have you have the different frequency for which it computes so you have all the steps of this so let's take a look so for this frequency the maximum response is like that. Now for which frequency? The first is uh, for the frequency equal to 2400 so frequency 2400 let's take a look and this is what I get so in this case you see that this is uh, the model will react like that. So the maximum displacement will actually be located in this area. So I increase the deformation so you can see a bit better what is happening. Um, and and you see that I just have to change a bit the frequency of the load, and then uh, the displacement decreases a lot. Now. Let's take a look at the second pick, 3600. And okay, now this is a different type of deformation. You see that the deformation is not the same uh, than previously, and this time the maximum deformation is uh, happening in this area here. 
You can also uh, view the corresponding stress. Now let's look at the last of the three uh, picks at 7600. Okay, now in this case, it's actually uh, like that. So the maximum deformation will arise exactly in the middle of this part. So it's, let's say, the, the model response that we would expect uh, as the primary response. But of course, we don't know until we checked. And this is what you get, 0.02 millimeter of deformation if this is excited uh, exactly at uh, this frequency. Now, to which, um, so I'm coming back, going back to the, my first question, to which of those uh, eigenvalues that I calculated previously with the model analysis does it actually correspond? So if I look at the graph, I have three response at 2,400, 3,600, and 7,600. And if I looking at the natural mode that I computed previously, you see that here the mode number four is the num num number four and the mode number yeah. Uh, they, they are actually quite close to uh, 2,400. 2,400 this mode. So this is probably this mode, the mode 6. Or you see this mode here is also very close. So I don't know exactly if this is the mode 5 or the mode 6, which is, a, uh, which is reacting. And if I would like to know this response, I would have to take smaller sampling here of the graph and maybe I will see two peaks inside of one. Maybe the sampling here was, was too large and I only see one peak, but actually there was two. So, and then let's take a 3600, as you see the mode 10 here, so 3600. And this is exactly like uh, the response we observe. So get something like that. So, okay, this is the real, uh, okay. And we don't have the mode at 7,000. The reason is that I only calculated 10 modes, but uh, there is an infinite number of modes. So actually it's a bit, if I, I, I wanted to be more rigorous, I would have to calculate much more of the modes to see what would be the higher frequencies at which I would have resonance. And I would find that I have also frequency at this one, 7,600. Now, I know that there are three potential dangerous modes in this analysis that I have absolutely to avoid in the design. Uh, and there's another uh, interesting thing to note is that when I am not resonating with this natural mode, you see that the response here is actually in between, is actually corresponding to the static response. And that's more or less. So, uh, and that's why I calculated this uh, static response to, uh, to give you an idea of that. So when I'm not resonating, I have a static response. And when I have resonance with the modes, I'm having a dynamic response, which may increase a lot uh, the response and the displacement. So I guess that's all for this uh, video. And I hope it was useful. And uh, in case there's something you didn't really understood or if you want to know more about that, please just uh, leave a comment on the blog, on the article in the comment section, and I'll try to come back to you and maybe I'll write another post more detailed or uh, with more uh, information about that. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, it was Cyprian from fe4.com uh, and see you next time.